My career journey commenced after I finished the high school certificate and I decided that I really wanted to get into education. So I did adult education at UTS and then I had also had an, an additional interest along the way for um, group work. That was one of the modules that I studied and so I enrolled with the Institute of Group Leaders and did training in that particular field. Along the path I've worked in community health for about 25 years, always continuing education as I dealt with particular populations and learnt more and was able to go into a deeper level of learning and understanding. Um, I then branched out and worked away from, from the Department of Health and worked in private industry, working with doctors in the medical field and also training. I started doing training in areas relevant to um, practice staff and then I went on to the area of mental health and this is where I found my niche in that area. I, um, I am the coordinator of a mental health training unit, so I'm actually building the unit. In order to do this, I had to have a, an understanding of the, the mental health sector and be able to work and build partnerships with existing training providers so that we could complement each other and work together, there, thereby being able to offer a wider range of topics. So now I also train. I train in, in suicide intervention and where necessary, because I do have the TAAE as well, so I'm able to do training in competency-based training too. Working in the area of education, particularly in the field of mental health, has changed vastly over the last 15 years. There's an increased awareness of the need for training in mental health and an understanding of the newer concepts such as recovery which have come into, into the context as well. So there, that's an expanding area where people who choose to work in that area will be able to um, be used widely because the, as the government decides to expand and have projects that are, that are devo and programs that are devoted to both the carers of those with mental illness and also the mental health system. So there's a, a lot of opportunity in the area of mental health and especially in training. The area of community services, and in particular mental health, is an expanding area and a growing area. I believe that anyone who enters this area needs to consider if they have a feel for it. I think you definitely don't go into it necessarily for the financial gains, but it, there's a lot of satisfaction from it. But it's also, because it's an expanding field, it, there's a need for newly skilled people. So I think that you're entering a relatively new field and that you need to realise that you ha will have an opportunity to, to take your own personal skills and build on them. So I think that you need to be prepared to continue your own professional development. As I, as I referred to before, I always continue to learn. But there's a lot available now through social media. So you don't have to just rely on the, the, the set text in a particular course. If you're adventurous enough and interested enough and passionate enough in the field, of providing information for people, of training them, or working with them as a disadvantaged population, you will find that you can obtain a lot of information which will take you to areas that you probably would be restricted to if you just stayed within the course content. So my advice to, new pe to people going into the field, especially of community services, is to always continue to learn, to always have good supervision. No matter, because you're a human being, you're in a field that's a caring field, it's important that you gauge and protect yourself from an area of burnout and that you're able to manage your own stress. It would be quite hypocritical to be working in mental health and for your own mental health to be compromised. So I think any worker in, in community services needs to protect themselves and to be aware of re-traumatising themselves by hearing stories or thinking of people in a negative way. Also, it's important that they continue to network. By continuing their studies, you'll be able to um, to link up with other people and then you've got mentors who've got the potential to network with people who can answer the areas that you won't be able to always answer, to draw on and enrich the work that you do and to prepare yourself and um, to, to um, meet the challenges that you will meet in the community sector. I already mentioned that it's important to network with people who work in, a, in related fields and as an individual I joined Rotary not because I had a lot of spare time I can assure you but I hope that it might be an outlet for me to use my skills in my own community and I because I do train in suicide intervention I actually believe that I will have the opportunity to go beyond my own community to the, to the whole of Australia and to actually gain the support of people who are like-minded and who want to link into the community. In saying that, there are other, many other opportunities that you can link in with, with similar networks. LinkedIn is one of the, as an example in, in particular in my workplace that I use, to find people who've got additional information and can also um, build opportunities for expanding in the area that I choose to work in.